Welcome to the second part of carry look ahead errors. In the last presentation, we found that CI is equal to GI or PI CI minus one. This was the equation that we found. And we already know that we are going to use this equation to predict the carry. And the prediction of carry is the everything in carry look ahead errors. So at the start of the addition, you are having the number A the first number you are having the number B the second number you want to add both of them you are having C minus 1 which is the carry input to your first half error okay if there is any carry from the previous additions then it is the carry so by using this three informations we are trying to calculate the sum and the carry as soon as possible so let's use this equation if I put i equal to 0 in this equation then let's see what we are having we are having c0 equal to g0 or p0 and c minus 1 okay let's say this is our equation 1 now in the next part we will put i equal to 1 in this equation so we are having c1 equal to g1 or p1 c0 why 0 because i is 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 let's say this is our equation 2 so what we want we want all of our carries c0 c1 c2 and c3 should have the carry c minus 1 on its right hand side so that we don't have to wait for any carry to come out this is something we have already discussed in the first part of the CLA okay so in our first equation we can see that C0 is having the carry C minus 1 only on the right hand side but in your second equation we are having C0 which is not C minus 1 so what we will do we will put the value of c0 which is z0 or p0 c minus 1 here and uh, try to simplify it so let's do it c1 equal to g1 or p1 from the first equation we are having c0 as z0 p0 c minus 1 okay and once you open the bracket you are having g1 p1 g0 or p1 p0 c minus 1 now you can see that the c1 is having only carry c minus 1 on the right hand side okay so we don't have to wait for any carry to be evaluated and we can directly have our c1 because c minus 1 is something we are having at the beginning of our addition so we can directly put c minus 1 here and we are having c1 we don't have to wait for the first adder to evaluate c0 and then the sum cs1 and then carry c1 so this is how the cla works and now let's put i equal to 2 in the equation so c2 and g i is there so g2 or p2 and at this time we are having c1 so again we have to put this thing because it is equal to c1 instead of this c1 so let's do it c2 is equal to g2 or p2 and the c1 will be replaced by g1 or p1 g0 or p1 p0 c minus 1 p1 p0 c minus 1 a very easy calculations we are doing okay so the next step is to open this bracket and by doing that we are having g2 or p2 g1 this is g1 p2 p1 g0 let me slide the board and the last term will be p2 p1 p0 with c minus 1 so again you can see that the c2 is having only carry term c minus 1 on his right hand side so directly putting c minus 1 we can have our c2 so what we are saving actually we are 
saving some time and how it is done let me show you this is your C minus 1 directly fed to your first half adder these are your two numbers a B definitely the first bit of two numbers and then you are having some and after all these things you are having your carry so if I want carry from this adder I have to wait all the way until this error has given the value and then only I am having the carry here from this error so we have to wait for some time because the gate inside this error will take time but by doing this thing by using this equation once I am having C minus 1 I can directly have C2 at this point because C2 is given by this equation in which we are having C minus 1 and none of the other carries C0, C1 involved. So we are saving time. So the last thing is to find out the value of C3 in terms of C minus 1. And I will get C3 when I put I is equal to 3 in our general equation that we evaluated in the last presentation. So C3 is equal to G3 or P3 C2. So let's do it it is g3 or p3 c2 now we will do the same thing that we are doing from the last three steps which is replacing this c2 by the value in which there is only c minus 1 so let's do it c3 is equal to g3 or p3 this whole thing will come in the bracket so g2 or p2 g1 or p2 P1 G0 or P2 P1 P0 and C minus 1 now let's open the bracket G3 is there P3 and G2 P3 P2 G1 P3 P2 G1 and this will be P3 P2 P1 G0 P3 P2 P1 G0 and the last term will be P3 P2 P1, P0 and C minus 1. So this is the value of your C3 and this was the value of your C2. This was the value of your C1 and this is the value of your C0. So you can see that all this C0, C1, C2 and C3 is having only C minus 1 as the carry term in its right hand side so it can be evaluated directly so what we have to do we have to implement this circuit so that we are having our sum and carry so let's do it I have already made the circuit only thing is to paste it down this is the circuit the CLA logic this CLA logic is all the equations that we evaluated now this equations this equations this one and the two other ones are uh, inside this CLA logic so what you need you need G3 P3 G2 P2 G1 P1 G0 and P0 now you already know that your G3 is equal to A3 and B3 the generating term that we evaluated in the last presentation similarly your P3 is equal to A3 XR B3 okay and your P2 is a2 XOR B2 P1 is A1 XOR B1 and P0 is A0 XOR B0 fine now in this circuit you can see that your sum 3 is what it is equal to A3 XOR B3 XOR C2 so here we are having C2 this is your C2 this is your C1 this is your C0 and C minus 1 is there and this one is your C3 so we can have our sum S3 directly because A3 and B3 is already given in the question A is your A3 A2 A1 A0 and B is your B3 B2 B1 B0 the 4 bit 2 numbers that we want to add so uh, this information is already we are having so A3 XOR B3 and C2 we evaluated in terms of C-1 and C-1 is already available to us 
C minus 1. So I can have C2 because in C2 G2 is A2 and B2 that's already available to us P2 G1 P2 P1 G0 P2 P1 P0 so all this thing is there from the beginning of the problem so I can have sum 3 directly similarly sum 2 sum 1 and sum 0 and C3 is also only dependent upon C minus 1 and also the XOR and AND combination of these bits so C3 is also directly available to us so you can see that we don't have to go to that cycle that we did in the full order we are having our result directly as soon as we are having the problem definitely these gates XOR gates and AND gate will take some time their delay but definitely this time is much smaller than the time taken by the full adder so you can analyze this circuit you can make this circuit in your exam and this is all you need to know about the carry look ahead errors actually this is the complete information that is required at this stage of time so this is all in this presentation in the next presentation we will see another arithmetic circuit